Hi, Mark. Hi, how you doing? Fine, how are you? I'm great. Happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday to you. Oh, God. I got so many things uh, with your name on it delivered to me for my birthday. I got, um, I got a few for you, too. There were some socks. Yeah, I got like six guitars, the expensive ones. I'll send them to you. But they're all they are always left-handed. And they are one of us. I don't think you're a lefty, are you? I'm not. No, no, I'm not either. I am, but I don't play lefty. Oh, really? I didn't. Did I? Oh, yeah, I knew that. Part time lefty. Yeah. Part time southpaw. I think I remember you throwing a frisbee with a left hand. Is that right? I think you you might be right about that. Yeah. Do you remember when I paralyzed myself in Germany temporarily throwing a frisbee, picking up a frisbee? I I'm trying to remember. (laughs) That would have been real early on, like right after I like joined up yeah. with you guys. <laughs> yeah. And I bent over to pick up a Frisbee. Me and Swift were playing Frisbee. And I couldn't bend back uh, over. <laughs> I don't it was it's so painful. It was the weirdest thing that's never happened yeah. again. <laughs> um there's our tour story. That's cute. Yeah. Um where are you? I, I'm I'm in my basement. In what city? Yeah, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh gosh, uh, the Guitar City. Get, um, yep, Guitar Town, um, Musicville. I think they call it. Musicville just doesn't those. You can't Ville music. I don't think. I mean, it's not a diss. It just doesn't. It's not phonetically pleasing. Well, they keep trying to make music a thing that happens here, and it just yeah. It's just someone I was failing. It's just a failing. Uh, nobody cares about music anymore. No, I heard that the, all the whole industry is packing up. Mm-hmm. It's well, they've they've got AI <laughs> to do it now. I think. Oh man. So how you been doing over the last? Uh, I don't think I've seen you in two years, in person. Yeah. Or maybe I have. I yeah, I have well, you. Yeah, you, we had lunch that one time. You came through town. That's right. I came we through town. That, that taco spot. Oh, we had tacos and it was raining. That was great. Yep. And we didn't get COVID from that meal. We did not. And that was lucky. Um, yeah, I've been good. I've been, you know, we did a bunch of work on our house. And and then I tore out the... You've been in my basement before, right? Yeah. It was yeah, just a, kind of a high that... ceiling rec room kind of zone. Yeah. Yeah. So I pulled all that down and put up rock wool and resilient channel and partitioned the room off. So I have kind of a control room and a live room and a, and a vocal booth now. Whoa. You have a full studio. It's like a full little, little like mid-sized studio down here. That's nice. Have you had some people in there? Yeah, I've had, I just got it finished kind of up and running over the summer. I've been working with a guy named Yuji Oniki. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a Japanese guy that Yuki actually hooked us up. And so, yeah, he's been he's been coming out here and there. You know, he's got songs, and we we work them out. Um, All right. And then I've been working with another guy. He kind of uh, – this other guy named Graham Beckler, who's a drummer and a good friend. We work on stuff around here in, in town. And so he moved a computer in. He's got, like, a little workstation down here. And and so he, he'll bring people in. I end up kind of engineering it, and he and I kind of will – co-produce or he'll he'll produce and i'll engineer speaking of uh playing around town i saw on instagram that you i saw a picture of you and the jack white team standing together with masks on were you rocking and rolling with with those cats oh yeah we uh we did a we did a session with yeah jack and daru and uh dominic who normally plays bass with jack yeah um and then and then the coolest part of it was Dwayne dennison oh my Um, god really yeah, that was... Uh, that is the cool... Well, no I mean, offense it's all, to everyone else. It's all else. very, very it's cool. All very it's cool, all very, very cool. <laughs> that's all it meant, the coolest part of it. The, is yeah, the, 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 the 16, 17-year-old in me was kind of to pick my jaw up off the floor all day. And really and with Daru, I want to play. Yeah. I want to I wanna play with Daru. We can share yeah. the floor, same instrument. No, he's a an absolute monster and the sweetest guy. All of those guys just the best of all things yeah have you done any um anything weird in the past couple of years have you done any weird music performances streaming weird shit any weird shin stuff 
it's it's been really quiet. I mean, I've been I've been home for four and a half years. Yeah, which is the longest I've ever been home. And uh, I'm you know I'm a little stir crazy, but it also starting to feel kind of normal to me. But no, I mean I've I've been doing I've been doing production work and I'm mixing a record you know for for a band out in Washington right now and oh you did some louder milk stuff we did some louder milk stuff actually yeah that that was that was some weird music stuff yeah we hadn't played together for eighteen or nineteen years so yeah that was really fun we only did three three shows and we keep talking about oh we're gonna do a little more we're you mm-hmm. know still waiting on our vinyl to come in. Which... <laughs> Who isn't? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Everyone blames Adele. I think it's Adele's fault. Everyone blames Adele. And I like to, speaking of Nashville and Jack White, I just like, for fun and games, I'm just always like, Jack White's fucking this all up. That just comes out of my mouth first. But I imagine him down there at at the pressing plant in Nashville, like going Adele in there. back rub saying, you can do this. You can fuck yeah. this up for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> No, never. yeah, he would never do that. No, he would never do that. He's a giver. No, it's. I had a. I actually had a good conversation with Ben from Third Man, where we yeah. saw each other or something, and we were talking about how long it was taking my band to get our our vinyl, and he was like, "Everybody's in that situation. Literally, we have a pressing plant, and we're in that situation. <laughs> like, it just takes that long. And yeah. and the weird thing is, is we as musicians are used to what it's been for the last four or five years." Where you could get vinyl within six months, but previously, yeah, it took eight to ten months to get vinyl. We're right back where we used to be. Yeah, good point. It's it just for different reasons. Yeah, but this is this is actually normal. There's a podcast that I'm going to do that's going to feature a very popular artist who is no longer with us, but we have to wait for the record to come out before we can do mm-hmm. the podcast. So it's even trickling down to the podcasts. Right, crazy. What a world. Who would have thought? We'd be here. <laughs> uh, do you have any touring planned this spring or summer or 22 at all? The Shins are, are doing, we're doing Just Like Heaven. Oh, yeah. Um, in, in May. I think they should call it Just Like Everyone But Joe. <laughs> all of Joe's friends all converging of Joe's in the same friends. place. So sad. <laughs> it makes me sad. I'm going to go, but I feel like I'll have a chip on my shoulder the whole time and I'll like get drunk and cry in everyone's dressing room whose band I play <laughs> in. <laughs> Just like make your way. <laughs> get yourself together. Like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm feeling better. And then like walk out the door and like, okay, now I get, get sad again and then go to the next door. <laughs> Isaac, you have a beer. <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of sad over at the Shins place. <laughs> um, well, that's good. You're going to get a little busy, it sounds like. Yeah, things are things are getting busy again. I got a kid on the way. Yes. I got I got some touring. Do all the things I love. Pre congratulations on your child. I mean, congratulations on Jamie carrying around a child. That's a task in itself. She's she she doesn't complain about it either. No, she's like just a yeah. trooper. She's amazing. Um. Well, you told me you have a couple tour stories for me, and I'm excited to hear those stories. Um. But you know what I want to do before we hear that story? I want to play an Earl Burroughs song, a song that me and my son, who's seven now, have listened to 4,000 times. Uh, And I used to send you guys video of him when he was two, Mm -hmm. and every time they pop up in my photo memory algorithms, I try to send them to you and Jamie. But I just want to play Hey Me Israeli. Sound good? Okay. Here we go. Yeah.
I was um, probably about 19 years old, and right before I joined Louder Milk playing guitar, I used to play drums in some Tri Cities bands. And the last band I really played drums for was uh, this band called Lumino with an E U X at the end because we were intellectual. And we, uh, yeah, we were playing some shows around the Northwest. And one of the things we were supposed to do was do this we got invited to play this festival in Sandpoint, Idaho. So we we are excited about this, and but there's not really much information coming at us about where to go, what time to be there, you know. But we we're all loaded up, and we're driving there, and it, my memory of it is that it was cold outside. But um, I think we got delayed, and there was a bunch of us from the Tri Cities. There was like a maybe three or four Tri Cities bands going to this thing. We all kind of show up at the same time. And I think we showed up and people were already outside, like in the rain, waiting. Like we had gotten delayed getting there or something, or we didn't even know where we were going. And we, we show up and it's like at this Elks Lodge outside of kind of in the, in the woods. And we get inside and, and the guy that's putting on the show is, he's like, oh, we got the, we got the best sound. Or we, we got the, you know, the best lighting guy in town. We got the best blah, blah, blah in town and blah, blah, blah. You know, he's trying to really pump us up for this thing. And we walk in and... The lighting is just out of his mind on on meth. He's sitting side stage with a fold-out card table that's just filled with combination plugs, and he's created this gigantic pentagram out of out of Christmas lights that he's plugging in and unplugging. <laughs> the whole thing's just this massive fire hazard. I don't remember a PA per se. I think I think we may have run vocals through somebody's guitar amp or something. But we play the show. The show went went okay. But prior to the playing the show, we were just getting shown around the space because the deal was we're spending the night there. Sleep on the floor at the Elks Lodge. Um, there's a kitchen and blah blah blah. And like here's here's the the weird creepy under the stage place. And they had this creepy little tunnel that went under the stage down to this sort of very Silence of the Lambs well that that went down <laughs> it was really scary down there and um so we play the show the show goes okay and and no no big problems there and we all get ready for bed and the lighting guy stays up and he's like working on his light show so we're all trying to sleep with these like just <laughs> strobe lights going <laughs> going off and miraculously everybody falls asleep and i wake up and the lighting guy is pacing around the room with an axe. Oh, no. <laughs> and he goes down onto the stage into that like weird, creepy area. And he comes back out. And I think I, I may have just been so tired. I'm like, I'm, maybe I'm dreaming this or this is the end. And I think I just kind of pulled my sleeping bag over my head fell back asleep with this like feeling of terror. <laughs> and the next thing I remember is the doors for the place flying open in the morning. 
and just sunlight and cold just <laughs> flooding in. of the Elks Lodge are there screaming, what the fuck? And they had no idea that a show was being thrown and it's just filled with these like shitty musicians <laughs> sleeping on their floor and this like cracked out guy with a pentagram. <laughs> and they just started like grabbing our stuff and throwing it out the door, like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and like hop out in your sleeping bag, hop out into the snow, get in your car and go. <laughs> so that was, that was our fun Sandpoint, Idaho story. I tried to verify with other people, like, did you see this thing? Because I woke up and this guy was just pacing around the room with that, a big ax. It was really surreal. I don't think, I don't know if I've been back. (laughs) Not because of the ax guy. (laughs) It's not because of the ax guy. They're just not having shows there anymore. We got permanently disinvited from, from Sandpoint. So I was um I was playing keys for a band that was we were doing some shows in the Northwest and we played Seattle uh, we I think we played the Crocodile and left the Crocodile we were supposed to go to Vancouver so we leave after the show most of us are probably pretty drunk at that point we drank a lot on this tour and we had this tour manager who um, I don't know I th- I mean he he might be a totally great guy my impression of him was that. The reason he was hired was because he knew how to procure drugs for one of the guys in the band. He, he just seemed to always have something on him. So we're driving up to cross the border and right around Bellingham, he's like, oh shit, I forgot I have all this fucking Xanax and I got all these like pills and I got blah, blah, blah on me. We gotta, we gotta do something. We gotta do something. And so he just starts handing out pills to everybody in the band. And everybody starts <laughs> popping pills. <laughs> and, and then he p- pulls over on the side of the road and he gets out a roll of duct tape and he, he runs out to this phone pole and he tapes all of, all of his drugs to the back of this phone pole. But then he had a, a bag of weed or something. And so he starts smoking as much weed as he possibly can. <laughs> and he's taking a bunch of pills and we head back toward, toward the border. And I'm already like a nervous Nelly about any of that shit. Like I, I kind of... Don't fuck around with a lot of chemicals because I liked them way too much when I was younger. But I'm drunk, and but I can see like everybody else here is fucked up, and <laughs> they're having a great time. We get to the we get to the border, and we look like shit. We smell like shit, and everyone is obviously high. And we get in there, and we're the only people in there. And they were like, "Okay, they take our passports," and they're like, "Okay, we're gonna search your." search your van and I start to get like really nervous. I'm like, they're gonna find they're gonna find something. They're gonna fucking find something. So we're in there waiting and everybody else is just having a great time. They're laughing about everything. And this tour manager's kinda like leaning back in his seat with his legs straight, but they're kinda crossed over each other. And we waited in there what seemed like two hours. And I'm certain they found something or you know, they they know. They know something. They're like, you know, I'm really paranoid at this point. And they finally, they call him. He's like, I'm the tour manager. I'm, I'm speaking for the group. So they call him up and he gets up to, to go over to the counter. And there's only two people there. And he trips over his own foot. He's got his legs crossed and he tries to step with the, with the back foot. And he trips himself and he falls flat on his fucking face. And everybody in the group, uncontrollable laughter. Everybody la- starts laughing at this. And he gets up kind of straightens himself out, goes to take another step and does the exact same thing again. Bam, right on his face face again. So, gets to the front. He was like, oh, I don't know what's going on with me. I must be really tired. I was up all night last night. And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever, you know. And they, they start calling us over one by one. And they hand us our passports back, and they let us through. They didn't ask a single question, and I'm, I'm, I'm convinced they thought, well, whatever was in the van, they've done it. They just let them through. They're going to sleep it off or whatever. But they let us through, 
I have no idea why. And we get, we get there. We get to go to play the show the next night. And right before we go on stage, the singer disappears. And he's kind of notorious for disappearing before our shows. And, and, and he shows up right before showtime. We're, <laughs> we're like, okay, let's go, let's go. We get on stage. We start playing. And he's playing well. He's playing well. And then he goes to sing. And the second he starts to sing, he can't play. His hands and his mouth won't work at the same time. And he's like, obviously just like, I think he'd been doing, doing heroin at the time. And he, he just couldn't get his hands and his mouth to work at the same time. If he was doing one thing, he could do it well. But at the same time, everything just came apart. So the drummer's like, pick up a guitar. You got to play. You got to like fix this. <laughs> so I like, I'm supposed to be playing keys. I like grab a guitar and I'm like trying to like, figure out what his guitar parts are while I'm like on the fly <laughs> trying to like salvage some of this and we finished the show the show was this train wreck and we load out and then the tour manager is nowhere to be found and like he and he and the singer both disappeared over to this park that was like a week like like our, like a, a block a park away in Vancouver back then mm -mm. the park yeah and he tour manager comes back he's like oh man check out all the weed I got and pulls out this bag of weed and we didn't want to come to my room. I'm going to smoke a bunch of weed. And one of the guys in the band was like, no, no, you're not doing that in your room. Like, we're going to get fined. We're going to get, like, we're going to get in a lot of trouble if you, if you do that. It's a, it's, it's a hotel. And they, they know these things. Um, if you have to smoke, do it in the van. And so we all go to bed. Everybody goes to bed. And dude stays in the van and smokes all the weed all night long <laughs> and we're supposed to go back the next day to the <laughs> cross at the same border <laughs> and we get in the, we, we get in the van and it just reeks of weed and of course like back then it's you know it's not legal anywhere and we're driving back and we're literally like within sight of the crossing and we can see like the guys are like flagging us to like all right bring, you know <laughs> come on in and the tour manager's just like I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. And he just, <laughs> as we're like pulling up the thing, f door flies open and this guy starts leaning out, just projectile vomiting everywhere. <laughs> and, and then gets himself together. Okay, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Everybody give me your passports. All right, we're good. And he got us across again. And then he wants to stop off and, and, and get the drugs off the back of the telephone pole that he taped them to. I have no idea how this guy did it. He's got a, a gift. This guy would, was an absolute train wreck, but then the second you needed something to happen, the little charm switch in his brain could turn on and he could like, he could work around all of his like <laughs> incapacitation. Falling over face first twice. Yeah, just on his face. Didn't even catch himself. They won't let you into a supermarket if you do that twice out front <laughs> much <laughs> less the, so. one of the hardest borders to cross in our country <laughs> yeah oh man yeah i don't know how he got us across but i love talking to my birthday twin thanks mark for the stories and thanks to you for listening for more stories and our companion episode the check-in go to ruinousmedia.com slash tour stories And now for a special cover by me, Mark, and Nate Mendel. The fix is one thing leads to another.
one for cover and this heat Why don't they do what they say Say what they need One thing leads to another You told me something wrong I know I listen to long with them One thing leads to another Yeah, yeah, yeah One thing, one, one thing leads to